Okay, and we're back. It's uh, Comp 308, and it's uh, Week Nine, Lesson Nine, Part One. Kind of in the, in the you know, near the uh, latter parts of the course. Um, just wanted to give you a bit of a, of a update again in terms of course structure. I know some of you have been asking for uh, outlines. We don't have a really recent outline of this one, only because things have changed. Um, so let's say we're, so we're here in week nine, and I'm planning to do some Angular Bootstrap and a little bit of Express again from last week. Uh, next week, we're going to be doing MongoDB, basics of Mongo, and understand how to install it and all that kind of stuff. The week after, we're going to talk about cloud services, and we have a, we've already arranged for a Microsoft representative to come in only for our class. Thank you very much. Um, and uh, he, will, uh, he will talk about cloud services. There's a, it's going to be on the second day of week 11, so it will be on the Wednesday at 10.30, week 11, in, this uh, in the other classroom, right? And um, there should be treats, too. should have, like, some uh, all kinds of food and all that kind of stuff, so I will make an announcement to remind people to be there. Um, but you'll be getting a um, kind of a temporary Azure account, because uh, we're going to be talking about Microsoft Azure and how to connect all these piece parts, Node, Angular, Mongo, to Azure, right? And clouds using cloud services. And that's going to handle kind of, um, by then, all of our objectives for the course primarily will be met in terms of delivery. And then you'll have your final project to do, which is do week 14 with a, pro with a little bit of a presentation, right? I recommend for your final project you bond with somebody and you work with somebody on it. I don't, I don't think it's doable if you do it on your own uh, in terms of time frame. So I think all of you are very busy. I've talked to some of you, and, uh, and not here, but in other classes as well. And I find that uh, there's lots and lots of presentations and projects and stuff coming up for the end, right? So I don't recommend you cover it on your own. You could if you don't like working with other people. Certainly, I will give you options, and I will provide that to you. Huh? In threes? In threes? No. No. Threes is too much. But uh, actually, you know what? I'll, I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. I'm serious. I'm not, I'm not joking around. Not because of anything else, but because there are some piece parts to the module. But the only thing is I will judge you differently according to how many people work with you, right? So if you work on your own, you know, look, look at certain things. If you look, work with one other person, and then each person's got to contribute in some way. You just can't, you know, one, two people can't work and the other person ride the coattails, right? That's no good. So um, we'll talk about the, how, we, how we accomplish all those things. So that's really it in a nutshell. If you notice week 12 and week 13, there really isn't anything there, right? How come? Well, because those you need those weeks, right, to work. <laughs> so we're going to be here, even though we don't have anything to, new to teach, just like we did in the other course we're doing. I need to give you development hours, or else you're not going to be able to do, because remember, part of this course is a project course. So in order for you to produce your project by the end, by week uh, 14, and have your presentation writing uh, on the time that it's due. So uh, we have two sessions uh, for, to do our presentations on the uh, Tuesday and the Wednesday of week 14. But your actual um, assignment will be due, your project will be due on the Friday, right? So that way I can look at it with you week 12, week, sorry, on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then it's due on Friday so you get maximum marks. That's the idea. But you need to have it ready. Okay, so it can't be like, well, I got it har partly ready, it's not quite working, and that's not acceptable. So in order for you to get your full presentation marks, uh, and I believe the presentation is going to be worth 10%, right, off the top of my head. And again, I'll put all this up online uh, by tomorrow, right? Uh, you should, uh, you know, you should, ha you, you need to kind of, it's a kind of a meaty thing to put together, right? Now, there'll be some options of what you can put together for your final build. I'm going to give you some options in terms of what you can build. Right, I'm not going to give you complete freedom of what to build. Why? Because it'll you'll write yourself into a black hole. There's just too many. If I give you this much room, you're gonna yeah, this much rope, you're gonna hang yourself with it, right? So I got to kind of reduce some of your options. There's still going to be quite a few of them. There'll be like three or four different options to make, right? But it'll be a quite reduced curriculum compared to uh, what you would normally do. And I've tried this before, where I gave people their uh, leeway to do whatever they wanted. And it turned out to be disastrous at times for some groups, right? So <clears throat> I need to give you some direction. And there's going to be a few options. And you'll see that there's going to be a core component, right? There's going to be some core components. And, the, like, everyone has to do certain core components. And there's other components you have to do that are going to be unique to the project that you're, that you're uh, completing. Okay, so uh, just a course overview again. 
I wanted to talk about today also, I want to talk about a couple things in terms of our setup. So if you notice here, I'm on the Mac side, I'm just going to go to the PC side here. And um, we need to, hopefully you've completed all the setup, but let's do this again so we kind of go over this. Now there's a couple things to note. I'm right now in regular command prompt. If you download and install the git shell, which is part of your little um, um, git, GitHub app, see this little GitHub app? When you download this GitHub app on Windows, you get this thing called Git Shell. Yeah? Well, Git Shell is a little bit better than just using the GitHub, the, just my regular command prompt, and I'll tell you why. Right? So if I look at uh, kind of do an ls in on Windows, typically it won't work. Right? You have to do a dir command. Right? Here's our directory command. Right? Well, with Git Shell, it allows us to do an ls command as well. Right? And I can do a clear command. Right? And if you notice, I can still do the same kind of um, different kinds of commands that we normally do. Let's say, for example, I wanted to create a new folder, right? And we're going to test out, um, and I got a couple of tests over here on the right-hand side, right? I'm just going to get rid of them because, you know, we worked on these last week. Let me get rid of this express demo, for example. And let's create one. So I'll say, you know, make directory, right? And we'll call it. And by the way, I have to be in the right place. So we're gonna, right now I'm in GitHub. That's bad. So I'm going to go see. I'm going to kind of drop out of there and go into my desktop. So I want to try to work with my desktop right now, right? Here it is. Here's my desktop. I did an ls command instead of a dir command. They're the same things in git shell. And then what I want to do is um, make directory a thing called, you know, kind of express demo. Okay, when I do that, I'm just clear the screen. Here I am. In my desktop, I want a CD to express demo. Right here I am. Right now, remember the quote, the commands from last week. We learned for Git. Right. So in order for us to start off a a new Git repo on the command line, what do we do? How do we start off a Git repo? Git init. That's the first piece. To do this with me. Now take a look. What I get here. Map. I get a little master thing, right? I'm a master. That's what it's telling me. Actually, not. What it's telling me is this is the master branch, right? Um, that's the first thing you get. And if you use <coughs> git shell, right, you get this extended feature set for command prompt that you normally would not get in Windows. Okay? Okay, that's the first thing. So I, I do kind of git init. What's the next piece I, I got to do? I, I should really put together a git ignore file, right? Because you need to put a git ignore file together to ignore things related to node. Because you don't want to send all your node modules up to GitHub. It takes too long and it's not recommended. It's not good practices. How do we do this? So we're going to do this. We're going to say, now how do I do it on the command line? That's the other question. Well, there's an echo command, right? We didn't talk, talk about this last week. So we can do echo. And let's say I want to uh, kind of uh, put something into a, or create a file. I can say something like this. Well, I want to make sure that my on the Mac side, I don't want any kind of DS store to be included in my um, in my Git repositories. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a kind of a double greater than sign, right, which says append or create a file called Git ignore. That's the format. Okay. So I'm actually piping this command, this echo command. Echo means you know, kind of print this out. That's what it means. And then I'm appending or adding to this file. If it exists, I, I append. If it doesn't exist, I create, right, this file called git ignore. And then I press enter. Okay, now look, my, I got some more, you know, little directives here. If you notice, I've got a red area here, right next to master, because it's telling me I need, I've got some things that are uncommitted changes. All right, so I got my git ignore file. Let's do more on my git ignore file. I'm going to say echo. I also want to add in to my git ignore file instead of just dot store uh, ds store. I want to do node underscore modules. I want to add that in too. And again, I'm going to append with a double greater than sign to the dot dot git ignore file. That's what I'm doing. Okay, cool. There's my node modules. I want to at least have those two. Right? There's other ones we can also include. For now, let's just leave it like that. I need my, my git ignore file. And you know, when I create a, read, uh, a repo, I should probably create a readme file as well, right? So let's do the same thing. So I'm going to say echo, and I'm going to say something like 
uh, pound sign, because pound sign is like a h1 tag in a, in a uh, readme.md file, markdown, right? I'm going to say, I'm going to call this thing the name of the repo, which is express demo, right? And then I'm going to go greater than, greater than sign. We're going to talk about the readme file, which is in caps, readme.md. MD starts from, stands for markdown, right? It's a type of file that's used on GitHub, and I'm going to press enter. Okay, that means the express demo uh, readme file has one line. It's called just express demo with a pound sign in front of it. Pound sign means it's an H1 tag, so it's going to be equivalent to what that is. Let's do one more line for that one. Echo, um, like almost like a description of what this repo is about, right? I'm going to say something like this uh, is an example uh, repo to illustrate uh, express JS and node, right? And then I'm going to double greater than sign into my readme.md file. And I did that. I just kind of did it on one line, right? And it kind of took me to the next line by itself. Okay, cool. So let's take a look. I'll do an ls, which is a list command from a, a Unix command, right? And it shows me my two files, my gitignore file and my readme.md file. Cool, cool. All right, I'm going to do, of course, my next command in git. What's my next command when I want to add the, um, these two files to the staging area for git? What, what do I do now? What's the command? Nope, that's, that's pushing it. I want to add these things to the staging area first. Remember, the staging area is a local repository area inside the .git folder, right? There's a .git folder that exists here. If I do ls minus al, right? Oops, or drr minus al, sorry. It's there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so it's all, the git file, it's not added right now. I have to add them. I have to add them. So git add, I can do this. I can say, I can specify the file. Like, for example, I can say dot git ignore if I want to. If, or if I just say dot, git add dot, means every, add everything. Enter. All right. So now, if you notice, it turned green. Let's just clear that up so you can see it. Click green. It says plus two. Plus two means I've got two additions, right? And now I need to make a commit. So git commit minus m. That's the switch we need to use. And then what's this thing? So I want to add added, uh, or maybe we'll make it initial commit. If we haven't done an initial commit, initial commit or uh, first commit, sometimes you'll see it like that, and then press enter. Okay, now it says two files changed, zero insertions, zero deletions, create mode, blah blah blah, git ignore, and readme.md. If I do a git log, right, git log shows me my commit, my latest commit, which is right here. And the commit has a long series of, of uh, it's almost like a code, that's a unique code for this commit. For this snapshot, that's what a commit is. And if you notice, it has my author name. My author is my name, right? Before I had this problem where I had to put in my email, blah blah. blah. Well, guess what? My Git shell doesn't require that. Okay. Cool, cool. So I've done this piece. Now I really got to link it to the repo, and I have to either create the repo or link it on. So let me just go back to GitHub. So There's a second piece to it. And let's see if I already have an express demo in here. I'm going to search my repositories for an express demo. So I'm going to type in express. Oh, there it is, six days ago. Here's my express demo with a bunch of stuff here. I'm just going to delete it. All right, so I'm going to go to settings. And I'm going to go down here, to says, which is danger zone, and say delete this repository. And I'm going to put it in here exactly how it's spelled, express demo, and get rid of it. Okay, cool. Let's put another one together. So here's my express demo. I'm going to go plus, new repository. If you guys want to follow me on this, you can do it for yourself. And then I'm going to call this express lowercase, express demo, just like my folder, right? And, cl and click on create repository. Okay, I've got my link. And look, it gives me directions right here on how to connect it. So it's right here, right? all the connections that I need. And look, it even gives you directions on how to do this uh, you know, kind of do an echo command, right, to put into the readme file. Take a look. It does all these things too, right? 
So we have all this. We have our git init. We've done this. We've done the add readme. We've done the commit, my first commit or initial commit. Now we need to do this piece, which is remote add origin and the name of your um, of your GitHub repository online. Okay, so we don't need this. We're just going to go back to Git shell. Here it is, and we're, we know we need to do that. So we go Git remote add right in the name of your repository, right? So if I've done this correctly, it's got to be in uh, HTTPS, so secure shell, HTTPS, right, colon, forward slash, forward slash, the name of GitHub, right, forward slash, the name of your account, right, that's mine, and then forward slash, the name of your Git repository, which is express demo dot Git. And once you've done that and press enter, it, if I've done it correctly, which I do not, right, it's going to tell you that everything's good. Oh yeah, I forgot one piece. It's got to say master on it. <laughs> or origin. I forgot that. So I can always up, kind of uh, arrow up, git remote add origin, and then press enter. Okay, now that I have it there, it's, my git remote has been, has been configured. That's what we, what's what we say. Once my git remote has been configured, then I can push my changes finally to my remote. So I can say git push minus u origin master. And once I've done that, I say take my origin, which is us here in, in the local repository, and push it, to push the master branch to my remote. That's what this is saying. Okay, so let's do that. Press enter, and then it shows you the commands or the, the responses if things go well. And I don't, it doesn't ask me for my name or my password because it knows that stuff already, right? And then I'm good to go. And then back on GitHub, I refresh, right? And hey, look, there's my stuff. Here's my express demo. This is my readme file that I created, right? I pull, picks it all up and everything else, we're good to go. Okay, this is good. This is great. This is grand, right? But what if you don't have access to your, you're working at someone else's site and you don't have access to their tools and they're asking you to do some coding. Or let's say you want to code on the fly somewhere, right? Now, I normally would say use something like brackets or download something like, um, you know, Sublime or, you know, use a text editor. Well, there's other options and this is the new thing I want to tell you about today. I'm not going to give you marks for this one, right? Because you haven't even done the other ones that I asked you for. But let's just look at this, right? You, there's a service that you can uh, subscribe to for free called Cloud9. I don't know if you guys know this Cloud9 service at all. If I just put, type in Cloud9, um, and if you look in, uh, Google pulls up c9.io, there's c9.io, if I click onto it, it says your development environment, blah, 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 and you can sign up to Cloud9 for free, right? So I encourage you to sign up. You don't have to, but if you click on sign up, Right, it gives you some very basic um, kind of information. Now I'm already signed up for for Cloud9, so this is what happens when you kind of you're into it. And you can also link up, take a look, your GitHub and your Bitbucket accounts into your Cloud9 service. Now Cloud9 is an online IDE, right? So it's like using Visual Studio or um, Brackets or something like that, but it's all online. Now one once upon a time, Cloud9 if it was ever made before, is completely undoable, right? Because, you know, our speed for the internet was so slow and response time was terrible. How could you have an ID that's online? Well, you know, Microsoft does it too, right, with their Office 365. And a lot of other uh, providers are using this kind of architecture to do stuff. Well, Cloud9 is no exception to that. So I have a project I've already worked on called Starbase 12, right? Remember I talked about that Starbase 12 game I did before? For some of you, and I kind of put it together with Heroku. But let's talk about something else. We just created this express demo. So if I look down into my all my different uh, uh, <clears throat> all the things I've done here on cloud on on uh, GitHub, I can look and see as an example. These are all projects on 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 GitHub, and I can look and see. And sometimes what happens is you'll find that you don't find your project in here, but most of the time it's here. See, look, there's express demo. I just made that. And it's linked to my to my Cloud9 account, right? Here's my Express demo. So if I click on that, and if I say clone to edit, right? This is really cool, right? I clone to edit this thing. It tells me 
hey, what kind of, what kind of uh, thing are you making here, Tom? Right? Well, I want to make a node application. So I'm going to click node. That's why this is so cool, right? Click a node. And then under node, and there's other options, by the way. There's, you know, different things you can do here as well. A custom. There's a C, C++ application. This is something new. Uh, they just recently added uh, WordPress. If you want to put together WordPress or Rails, um, you want to work on anything. This is something you can do live. But I want to do this. I want to do this node. And if you notice, this is my GitHub link. This is my express demo that I just made. Here's my source URL, right? I want to create this thing. Click create. And then what happens is it says cloning workspace. It takes a second for us to clone. Uh, it takes different time frames according to the internet, right? Okay, my, my, my uh, code space or my workspace is cloned. So I've got this express demo. And I'm going to click on start editing. Okay, take a look what I get. Cloud9 comes up and then I get a full-fledged editor online. But not only do I get an editor, I also get a bash scripting area right here, which is right on uh, online. You don't have to even have bash. Let's say you're, you don't, you have a, you're working on a PC, right? In this particular case I am. And you want a full bash script. You don't have to run a virtual machine for Linux or, or whatever. It's right here. Everything you need. So if I do ls, here I am in, in the bash script. So I'm just going to pull this up a little bit so you can see it more, right? Here, I'm going to do an ls command, and look, I've got my readme file already, right? I also have my gitignore file, and if I look at it, here's my gitignore file. If I double click on it, it provides a tab with everything I would normally see, right? And in here, I'm going to pull something down that says, I know I don't want to include anything from Cloud9 because I'm going to be using Cloud9 for this example today, right? The whole time. So I've got brackets last week, Cloud9 today. And the reason why I'm saying Cloud9 is a really cool um, way of doing things is because you've got everything at your fingertips. You've got one ID to rule them all kind of thing, right, online. And it's a pretty cool ID. It's not perfect by any means, but no ID is perfect. Okay, so let's go. We need to add a C9 um, into our Gitignore because Cloud9 also includes that kind of stuff. All right? So here's my C9. I'm going to control S to save, just like we normally would. Right? It's fully featured. If you notice, there's a whole menu system and everything else that's part of the ID. And uh, what I want to do here is I want to use this repository as an express repository, right? Now remember, we have to do things like um, if I want to, I have to install or initialize stuff, right? Well, this is a fully, fl a you know, fully forged out, um, you know, kind of git bash or bash bash window, if you will. So if I need to add a, an express generator, which is what I want to use today. How do I do that? Do you guys remember? This is all review from last week. Oh boy, you guys are all like it's it's or it must be early today. So it's uh, an express. So I need to go npm, right? Um, install and I don't have to use sudo because or sudo. Some people say sudo. Um, it's basically super user do, right? That's what it is. Super user access. I don't have to do that here because I have super user access right away. So npm install, and then of course it's going to be minus g, right, for global, and then express, and then generate, right? Right, and if this works fine, if I press enter, it'll tell me if there's an issue or whatever. Now sometimes, uh, if you notice it's working just like normal, take a look, right? So we're using Ubuntu, it's, it's a VMware Ubuntu version 10.35, that's what's happening. And here's my version of Express Generator. Okay, cool. I've done this online. Everything's online here. I'm not touching my, my, uh, my desktop. All right? Okay, this is the next piece. So now that I've done this, let me just do a, CL, a CLS for clear. Oh, sorry, clear. I'll be okay. And I'm just going to pull this window up a little higher so you guys can see it all. I don't need the other window right now because this is my, my bash window, right? Okay, cool, cool. So I've done this. And um, what I want to do with this piece now after I've, I've uh, installed my generator is actually create a workspace. So I've got my workspace, which is where I'm at right now. And if I want to do my generator, right, now there's a couple things I can do. First of all, if I go into my git bash and I start typing ls, if I go up one level, right, can I go up one level? I can. If I look at it, I see my workspace, right? So this is the workspace that I'm at, right? I'm actually, my workspace is where my folder lives, so to speak, right? So if I want to generate my my stuff here in the workspace, I need to do 
express here on the other outer level, right, minus e, right, for I want to use ejs, because I told you guys that's just easier to use than j, right? And then I kind of have to put in workspace, right? That's where I want it to go. Now it already has stuff in there. So you know, it'll ask me, do you want to do that? And I may have to use the dash f attribute if it finds stuff in there for force. Let's try this out. It says destination is not empty. Continue. Yes. Okay, and now it, it kind of puts all my, my shell together. Take a look at what it generates. This is a generator, right? So it generates all this uh, folder structure, which is exactly what I want. I don't want to do all this by hand every single time. It's a pain in the ass, right? Okay, cool. This is one piece to it. And if you notice, it says CD workspace and NPM ins install. So I'm going to do this. So CD workspace. I'll just type it just like that. The double ampersand side and NPM install. <coughs> And when I do that, it installs my node modules. Here's my node module starting to generate. All my node modules will get pushed in there, right? Just like I normally would. Do an ls command. Let me do a clear command first. Clear command. Do an ls command. And here's all my stuff for my um, inside my workspace. Cool, cool. If I do an ls minus al, I get more details in my Ubuntu workspace of all the stuff that I'm seeing. Here's my C9. See that C9? Um, that's why I put it in my git ignore. I don't want this C9 stuff to go in there, right? So here's all the stuff that I want. Okay, cool. If I actually click into one of these, I can actually physically click with my mouse into one of these folders. And I can click open, and it'll open it up for me on the left hand side here. Okay. Or I can go CD node modules, and I can go, I can kind of do a directory listing. I can also open it up here. They're all related automatically. Here's where all the stuff, these are all the modules that I got by doing my generator. Right, so I'll do a clear command. Okay, and I've got my folder structure now. This is cool. And if I want to add additional things in here, like into my node modules or additional functionality, right, I could do that here just like I would normally do. Right, so let's go back out one step. Oops, back out one step, and then here I am. Okay, cool. So that means I could do a npm, which is the next piece I would do for sure, in it, because I want to change up my JSON file again. And it says my, the name of my, my, my uh, code is called workspace, this application I'm making, which is incorrect, actually. I want to make it call, I want to call it express demo, which is what the name of my workspace is. My version number is 0.0.1, .0 because it's my first version. My entry point could be app.js, I'm cool with that. And then it says my Git repository. Hey, picked up my Git repository. That's cool. And then my keywords, I can leave that out. My author, that's me, right? And my license, let's leave it as that for now. And it says, hey, here's a description, la, 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 bash, bash, bash. And then I say, yes. Okay, cool. That's kind of weird that it did that. But let's just take a look. Okay, so here's my stuff. And if I want to take a look at my package.json file, I can double click it and certainly I can look down to see what I see. Well, this is interesting. I got all this extra stuff from my description, and I don't really need this. This kind of makes no sense to me to add all this, these big lines of description code. So I'm going to get rid of that and kind of change it up. It's probably because I didn't put anything in my description. So I'm just going to kind of pull this down and change my description to what it should read, which is going to be something like this. It's going to say, um, <clears throat> make sure that I put that other quotation mark, express uh, and uh, Node.js, Node.js uh, demo project. Right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to control S for save. Okay, and if you notice, remember we talked about the package.json file having all of these dependencies. Right? You need these things whether you're doing Node, Express, Angular, whatever, you need all this stuff. Right? Okay. So I need all this, these things to work because if I don't have these things, I can't make my, my stuff work, right? These are the, the first things I need. The other thing is, from a, uh, a folder structure perspective, just going back to refresh your memory, I have a JavaScript folder here, which is empty right now, a style sheets folder that has a style.js file. If I look inside of it, there's nothing really here, right? We'll just get rid of this for now, and I'll control S for save. So it's going to be an empty file for now. I'm going to need an app.js file that kind of governs me, and I have that here. And if I look at my app.js file that's been pre-written for me, I have 
I, I do this kind of var express. I, I can you know kind of create this new express variable that requires the express library, right? I also have this var path that requires my path uh, module and this fav icon, right? I'll be honest with you. I don't know we, if we need to use this fav icon right now, um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remove it, all right? And I'm also going to remove the user's uh, root, which we're going to talk about. There's two roots that have been established here. One of them is an index.js root. The other one is a user's root, okay? I don't need users because I don't have any kind of user authentication with our, with our app today, so I'm going to remove that root, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So first I'm going to remove the path, uh, sorry, the fav5 fav icon, right? By the way, if you don't want to follow along with the C9, Cloud9, you can certainly follow, around, uh, follow up with brackets or anything else you're using. So I'm going to take that out. I'm also going to remove this user's root. And remember, from a rooting perspective, what Express is going to be doing for us with this mean stack is creating our roots, right? Um, and also, it's going to be allowing us to inject um, other things in there um, in terms of uh, <clears throat> uh, other non-static content in here as well. Okay, so that's one thing. And if you notice, I have the type of engine. This is the next line. So if I say view engine setup, here's my view engine setup. I use this path.join. In order for me to use the path.join, I have to have this path uh, module kind of defined here. And that's what we do here in the top of Express, right? So I say path.join, right? And if you notice, views is the actual name of my folder, right? Here's views down here, right? And I say join views, right, with my regular directory name, my, comp, my, my, my kind of main folder, if you will, and then add views to it. So I never will have to go to views, right? I'll never have to actually put, from a pathing perspective, all this does is say, assume that when I, when I go on my website, automatically the views is appended to it. So instead of the user typing in, uh, the, name of, the name of your uh, website, so example.com forward slash views. He doesn't have to put the views in there anymore. It's automatic. That's what this does, right? And then it says, hey, what kind of engine do I want? Well, I want EJS because that's the templating engine I want to use. There's different templating engines. You can use handlebars, you can use EJS, and you can also use Jade. Those are the three main ones for uh, Express. <clears throat> okay, and then, of course, there's my fav icon. I don't need that. So it's already uh, kind of uh, grayed out or commented out, so I'm going to take it out. Um, these are other things. It allows me to log um, my results when I start uh, my server up and so on. And then I have these two routes. Okay, if you notice, when I use an app.use command, and here's my backslash, it says that this basically indicates that when a user goes to my website and puts just enters the website for the first time, right, this backslash takes them to, to the routes folder. Right, that's what it does, right? So the routes folder is here, and my index.js is the first file it's going to hit when it goes to the routes folder, right? We'll talk about that in a second. If, however, I use the um, <coughs> forward slash users, um, you know, route, if someone types in example.com forward slash users, it's going to use the users route. And the user's route, we're going to define in a second. So there's two routes. There's, there's one that says just routes, and the other one says users. And we're going to look at that under the routes. There's two different options here, to uh, index and a, and a users. Well, we don't need the users ones. So we're going to take that one out, right? And if we take that one out, we might as well just destroy the file because we don't need that either. So I'm going to take this one away as well. So right now, I don't need users. OK, cool. I also have a default route. Here's my default route, app.use. And it says basically, hey, if you go anywhere else right, that I haven't defined up here in my routes, right, inside my folder, this routes folder, then give them a 404 not found. That's what this is. Okay. And here's a couple of error handlers, how to handle errors <clears throat> when it, both on the development side and the production side. It's very, 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 very straightforward stuff. Again, we've seen it a couple times. Do I expect you to know this, like the back of your hand, and write an Express app, like for no, you know, in two seconds? Absolutely not. <laughs> right? You would never do that because we generated for you. Right? You use the Express generator, and it would come up, uh, kind of, come up with something. And when we use Node and Express here in this course, our scope, we have to limit it a little bit. Why? Because we don't have a lot of time. 
even if we started this at the beginning, you know, understanding Node and Express could be a course of its own, right? But we're going to make it so that Node and Express we're going to be using for both the server platform, which is Node, and the routing system or um, uh, web server framework, which is Express. That's all we're using. Okay. So then here's let's look at this routing under routes. We have this index.js file. Let's open that up. And if you notice, we have this first route. It says Express. We're going to require Express again here in this folder because it's a module. And then we're saying our router is an Express router. And if you notice, we have our first route, which is the home page. If I want to set up a second route, as an example, then I would set that up. And if you notice, it says render the index. Now remember, whenever we say render, we've already linked views, views to the path, right? Which is here. Here's our views folder. And now we have this index.ejs file that we can, we're, we're kind of putting on there. And then we have this variable. If you notice, this is a, an object, right? Because whenever we see these curly braces, these stashes, and anything inside the stashes is considered an object, we have an object property, a title and a, a value, express. So we're actually sending the title express to this object when we go into the view, which is index.ejs, which is our main view right now. So let's change that, say, change it. So instead of express, it's going to be express demo with a lowercase e. So we know it's our, our project. So this is what's going to go into the title. And I'm going to say save. OK, look at all these files I got to open up here. Let me open up another one for you, just because. I'll open up index.ejs, ejs being our template. Here's our template. looks like, hey, HTML, right? And if you notice, remember we talked about this review from last time. My less than percent sign and equals indicates that anything that's in these percent sign, uh, these kind of uh, braces, if you will, this is the way Express does their code blocks, right? By using these less than percentage, uh, percentage greater than, right? Just like if you think about PHP uses less than uh, question mark PHP, right? And then question mark PH, uh, greater than and so on. Um, that's the way we would do here in Express. So I'm actually with the equal sign, what I'm saying is take a variable, because we use the equal sign for variables, and plop it in here in our title. With our variable title, going back to what we did in index.js, is of course Express Demo. So it's going to take the value of Express Demo and plop it in here into this the title of our EJS template. Okay, cool. And then what we're going to do is we're going to say, here's our link. And if you notice, it says style sheets. It doesn't go public style sheets, right? Because public is also something that's assumed as part of our path. So public and views are both part of our path. And whenever we look at style sheets, we, only, we don't actually put in public style sheets, just style sheets. Right? And then here's our style.css, which we're going to, by the, by the way, change something else. And we have some H1 tags and everything else. In here, well, guess what? Built into Cloud Nine, I have um, Emmet, which is the same thing that I would have in brackets or something else. So if I wanted to write more code in here, like one of these, I want to create another paragraph tag, and then, but instead of a paragraph tag, I want to put in some lorem text. I can say lorem ten and then tab, and it would do that for me, right? Just like it would do in brackets, right? So here's Control S. So I've added, changed my template a little bit. Okay, cool, cool. Here's my template. And what I want to do here, if you notice, so I've got all this, this template, and I want to run this thing for, for God's sakes. But how do I run it online? Well, first of all, we've made a lot of changes, right? So let's pull this back up. Let me just get rid of some of these things that we just changed. If you notice, this one's not saved. I'm going to save this thing, right? I'm going to kind of go in here and just drop out of these all these changes we made. And I'm going to pull this up for a second, just so that we, just from a, from a space perspective. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to do a clear. Clear command, which pulls me up here. And then here, I want to do some Git stuff, right? Because we just modified all the stuff. Well, we're connected to my Git repository. Just like the command line, I can do this from here. So I can start off. Let's remember, git add dot adds all those things to my Git. And if I go git status, it shows me what my staging area looks like. These are all the files I'm going to add, right? OK, cool. And now I'm going to go git push. Oh, sorry, git commit minus m. I'm going to say added express uh, template. Right? Okay, it does that. It adds it all into my files. 
Let me clear that up again. I'm going to go git push origin master. No problem. Git push origin master. When I do that, press enter. It says, hey, do you want to? are you sure you want to do this? I say yes. And once I've done that, it doesn't ask me for my name. It doesn't ask me for my password. It connects to Git, and then away I go. And if I look online to GitHub, so I go back to, to GitHub. And by the way, I have it in here on a dashboard. And if I refresh, these are all my files now, man. Take a look. This is all my stuff I just did for online on Cloud9. All my nice work, eh? What do you think? Not bad? So online ID, something that you can use anywhere you are. Doesn't matter where you are. As long as you have a Cloud9 account, which is free for the first 500 megs or something like that, um, you can totally use this thing. Uh, really cool. We're going to be using yeah. Cloud9 and brackets interchangeably. I'm going to kind of go move back and forth between the two. Um, I want you to get very comfortable with it. You don't have to have a Cloud9 account. That's why I haven't made you do it and give you percentage points for it. I'm going to be using it a lot because it really works nicely and it plays nicely with different things. And it has an online node editor and, and you can do all kinds of wonderful things with it, which we're going to talk about. Okay, so here back in Cloud9, I'm going to pull this down here, right? Uh, so I've done this. I've already linked up with GitHub. And now I want to create um, a runner, right? Now, if you notice, I have a bash window. I also have an immediate window. Here's my immediate window where I can do some stuff. I want to talk about like what this is. So for example, if I want to do some JavaScript testing, like I want to say var um, my, my variable, right, is equal to 5. I can do that, and if I say, you know, alert, right, my variable, I can do that, and it'll pop up an alert. So an immediate kind of JavaScript window that I got in here on the immediate side. So I can do that right away. So I've got my bash window, my immediate window, and I've got this little plus sign over here. If I click on the plus sign, it gives me the ability to do this new run configuration, right? So I got, I can... I mean, I can do these things. These are the three things I can do. So here's my new run configuration. Cool, cool. Well, if you remember when we kicked off our, um, our script, right, we have in here, take a look, inside of our um, bin folder, right, whenever we kick this off, in our www fold, uh, uh, file, right, it tells us how to run the folder. It says we need to run it like this. We need to say... I'm just going to look through here so you can see it. It says, I need to go to bin www, this, this file, to run my node script. So my file is going to be like something like this. Uh, debug is equal to whatever the name of my, my, my uh, workspace is. In this particular case, right, we're calling it workspace server, right? I don't want to call it workspace server. I can call this whatever I want. This is my debug command, right? Instead of workspace server, Right, which I don't like, I'm going to call this just express demo. Right, so I can change that up here, modify my first file. And then once I've done that, I can kind of do something like this inside my command. This is the typical command we would run for to make a uh, node run. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say debug right, equals to right, express demo. Right, and then, of course, um, express demo would be the name of the, the, the file that we're running, right? <clears throat> and then, of course, is dot slash bin slash www, right? See that? That's typically what we'd run in the command line. Okay, cool. It also tells me what kind of runner do I want to make. Right now, my runner is a shell command, right? But what I want to do is I can actually choose a type of server. Here's one. Apache HTTP PHP HTML. So if you want to run a little Apache server for yourself, it's right here. You don't have to kind of create one. You don't have to use MAMP or WAMP. It's ready to go right here, right? Um, I can make it so that I'm running for something for C++, um, you know, different things, Python, Ruby, different things that you can run. Also a shell script or shell command. But right now, I want to make it so that it's a Node.js server that I want to run, right? Okay, cool. This is the tricky part to make this go. I'm going to have to try this a couple times. So the other thing is this CWD, right, this current working directory, it says unset. I have to kind of point it to what I'm looking at. And I want to point at this express demo folder, which is I want to select this one, right? Sometimes we need to do that because then it points at app.js and my bin file. 
system here select here okay cool <clears throat> now if um, everything is done correctly I should just be able to click run <clears throat> and it'll run my server let's check this out sometimes it gives me the, these errors which we're gonna have to correct hey there's an error it says important use process and port right as the port and process env IP as the IP address because typically when we have a server we give it a hard fixed address well we've already done that here's process env port and 3000 right as an example now the easiest thing of course to do for our shell command is that if you, this isn't working you can always put in what we normally would put in right bin www let's try that if that's the right way to do it And there we go, All right? So it's listening on port 14, uh, 15454. Now you can't run 15454, but if you notice, I have my custom script right here, HTTPS express demo dash Tsiopoulos, my, my name, my account name, dot C9, which is cloud9.io. That's the unique address I got from my, from my little uh, application. If I click on this, <clears throat> it'll run, and there's my express demo. So I'm actually running it. And if you actually go there right now, try this. Try going to express demo to the uplist.c9.io yourself. Go there. And what the great thing is I've got a live site that I can kind of test with right now. So you guys can test with me. Right? <clears throat> and if you notice, it gives me what I'm, I'm responding to. It gives me all the feedback that I want right here, um, which I don't have to do. And if you notice, here's my of my express demo welcome to express demo and all this kind of stuff and i've kind of put together this little little website now the great thing is it's a live site so if i make a change right as long as i don't make a change here oh i got some other people accessing i see oh some other people right <clears throat> it tells you all the stuff that you're accessing and it shows you what you're, what you're doing right so it's a live site this is my server i've just run node and express and Express is running on C9, right? Cloud9. Any questions around this? <clears throat> it's really quite neat to me, right? Because again, it's uh, fully online. Imagine, imagine going fully online and, I mean, it's not open source because this is a paid for service at the end of the day, right? But it does give you some limited space that you can use for your own stuff. Okay, cool. So this is one piece to it. I'm testing it here with uh, Cloud9, right? And this is important, almost part of my deployment process to change, right? Let's modify our index.ejs file. So I'm just going to bring this up while I'm running the, the other server, right? And if you notice, my ejs file has no form and function to it whatsoever. I want to add Bootstrap, right? Because Bootstrap is a big thing. How do I download stuff with Bash and add Bootstrap? Well, this is where our file system comes in nicely, nice handy. Let's try this out. Well, I know I have Bootstrap already pre-downloaded. And again, you can go to the Bootstrap website and grab everything from getbootstrap.com. Right? But if I look down, I have my bootstrap.distribution. And I've got my JavaScript files, which is my bootstrap.min.js. And I've also got my, in my fonts, I've got some fonts. I can put those in there as well. And I also have my CSS. These are all my CSS files I can certainly include if I wanted to. Um, and I want to do some of this. Well, let's look. There's my stuff. Here's my files. Maybe I can do a drag and drop. What is that? Maybe that would be great, wouldn't it? For an online little IDE to accept a drag and drop. Let's see if this works, first of all. So, first, I need to point at something like my JavaScript. So, I'm going to go into my JavaScript file. I know I, know I need this bootstrap.min.js. I'm going to drag and drop it into here. Let's see if this works. Bam. Right? So, now I've just dragged and dropped, just like Visual Studio, eh? Okay, let's do this again. I like that. So I got my bootstrap. Let's go to downloads and let's go back to, oh, sorry, let's go back to my CSS. And I need my CSS files and I might as well take my, my map file too because it helps me with modern web apps. They demand that I have my map file, right? So I'm going to take my map file and my min.css file, these two files. Now I'm dragging drag and dragging a couple files. I'm going to throw this into style sheets. Okay, let's do that. Oh. Bam. Okay, we got the style sheets in there too. Cool, cool. So I've done that. And, um, all right, that's neat. I got my fonts folder. And you know what? I don't really have a fonts folder in here, but I want to have access to a fonts folder. So I got images, and I, I want to do my fonts. I might as well just drag it over to public. Let's see how that works. 
Yeah, there it is, my fonts folder, right? Done that too. Okay, cool. Well, I did all that, and my server's still running, right? I haven't changed my server. I'm just trying to change this up right here. I've got my link to my style sheet, but you know what? Where's my style sheet? I want to rename this thing. I don't like style sheet, style.css. I want to rename this thing, and let's call this thing app.css. There it is, app.css. Well, that means i got to rename it up here, right? App.css. Okay, cool. So I've got my app.css, but I also want to add in my bootstrap stuff. Well, let's start typing link dash, right? And I need to make some kind of link. It's got to be a style sheet. So here it is, my style sheet. And I need to have a reference, an href, right? Href is equal to, right? If I, oh, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Bad Tom, bad Tom, right? Href, and it's equal to, and then of course I want to go style, uh, for backslash or forward slash style sheet, forward slash, and of course it's going to be, if I can do this properly without me uh, being so tired, instead of app.css, it's got to be bootstrap.min.css, right? So bootstrap, come on Tom, bootstrap.min.css. <laughs> So I've got my style sheet kind of put in there as an example, right? And uh, it's funny that I've got this link and backslash link, which is incorrect. Got to take this back over here and then backslash. I need to know these things a little bit. So I got kind of got that in there. Okay, cool. There's my style sheet, my bootstrap style sheet. I need that for bootstrap. And I also need my inside the body of my application. I need the bootstrap uh, JS stuff, right? And I also need jQuery, because I can't do bootstrap without jQuery. That's a requirement, right? So, hmm, okay, got my JavaScript bootstrap.min.js, but it doesn't kind of include jQuery. Let's see if I got a jQuery download. Probably do, because I keep on downloading jQuery all the time. Right, here's jQuery mobile. I got foundation. Hey, I got my foundation site, and it had jQuery in there, didn't it? Yeah, it did, under JS, under my vendor, Here's my jQuery. I can try to use this one. I'm just going to drag a random one. So jQuery and put that into my JavaScript. Include that in there. And now in the bottom, i got to do a script, right? So script. Oops. Script. And in my script, I need a source. Right? And in my source, I need to point to uh, JavaScript, right? So it's going to be uh, forward slash JavaScripts forward slash, right, jQuery.js. I need to use that. And I might as well take this whole file here, highlight it, control C, and all the regular highlighting works, control V, right? And instead of jQuery, I need to put in bootstrap.min.js, right? There it is, my bootstrap. So jQuery, my bootstrap. And I need also my own JavaScripts in there as well, just in case I want to do some kind of custom scripting. I want to add that in there, so I'm going to go new, right, add, and I want to add a new file. Here's my new file, and I want to add in my, some kind of custom.js, right, file, which for now, let's leave it as is, and I'm going to kind of take this and control V, and then my custom.js is going to be underneath here if I want to do anything. So here's my custom.js, which I'm not going to do anything with right now. Okay, cool. So this is now uh, a bootstrap application, but the only thing I need for bootstrap to make it go, of course, is some kind of enclosing div tag with a, um, a class of container, right, for, for bootstrap. Here's my bootstrap class, and I want to take all this stuff out of here, right, my h1 tag, I'm going to cut it out, and I'm going to put this inside my container, just tab it in a little bit, right, because just to make it look nice, and then put this and here, now I haven't updated my file yet. I'm going to control S for save, and I'm going to go back to my express demo, and I'm going to refresh, and then I should see my bootstrap. So you should see that too. If you go to express demo now, I've got my express, my bootstrap styling. That's kind of been bootstrapped to the express demo. Right? I did that all without stopping my server, of course, because I haven't made any changes to my server, and I haven't added any roots. I haven't done anything like that, so I can make changes to my Express stuff on my side, and then it'll 
it'll you know give you my changes later on. I don't have to change my my Express server is or my Express stuff, my templating is just an HTML page equivalent, right? So I don't really have to do much. It gives me my feedback, and we're good to go. Okay, this is cool. I like this, right? But you know what? I want to share my changes, right? Because I'm working with another user, let's say, maybe a friend of yours who you're working on a project with. I'm just going to go in here and put, put the word clear in here to clear it up. And I want to share this with GitHub. So I'm going to do the same. I've made a lot of changes. So I'm going to go git <clears throat> add dot. It says, warning, you ran git add with neither an A or a whatever. Well, let's see what we've got here. Let's go git status. And here's all my files that we have. We have a deleted file too, right? We deleted our style.css, so I can do like kind of a git remove rm, and I can do something like a, you know, style.css. I can try and get rid of that. It says fatal. My path for style isn't right. Well, what is it? That's put the whole path in there. Git remove public, just like it says. I can probably copy it if I want to. Style sheets, right? Style.css. Right, so I remove that from the path. If I go git status now, I don't see that anymore. Right, so these are all my files that, I, that are part of my staging area. Right, I've already staged these things anyway. Right, so I want to go git commit minus m, and then I'll say <clears throat> these are all the things I added. Added bootstrap uh, framework. Okay, all in git push. And I'll say origin master. It does that? Yes. Pushed it. I'll go back to GitHub. I have all those changes, right? And if you notice, if I go into my public style sheets, I've also removed that funky style that CSS with the RM command remove, right? So I've unstaged it, right? Go back. But now I want to get it here locally on my system because I've been working, you know, remotely and I'm working with a user. You know, I got my git bash command up here going on. How do I pull it locally now? I've got to merge it, right? Well, the way to do it is, of course, go <clears throat> git pull origin. And then it connects, pulls all that stuff in there locally. And then when I look at it, my actual file, so just minimize all this stuff, right? And this to look minimize this too. I have this file called Express Demo. Here's my folder right here, right? And then look, I got all my folder going on, my public, my routes, my views, everything. So all my my actual folder is right here as well, right? So kind of a neat little tool, right? Working online, and this what kind of works makes we're working with other collaborators nicely, right? You work online with Cloud9, you're fully online. You work with another collaborator with their workspace, and then of course. You collaborate on GitHub, it automatically updates on Cloud9, but you can always pull it down into your own workspace. So that's kind of Cloud9 demo in a nutshell, which is I, want to, I wanted to cover that with you today. And I wanted to kind of go over Express a little bit. And you can see the power of Express. If you know Foundation, I just loaded in Bootstrap, but you guys know Foundation. So if you wanted to use Foundation and all the styling that you get for Foundation, hint, hint, for your first assignment, I want you to Expressize your portfolio website right, and make it work on Node Server, right, this is what your assignment's going to be for tomorrow, right, so I want you to take your existing, uh, your existing server or your existing website and put it, make it work with Express and Node, that's your first assignment, so how do I do that, so I'm taking all my stuff, the way I've made it, my style sheets, my foundation framework, if you use foundation, if you want to make, switch, switch it over to Bootstrap, you certainly can now, take that ex existing website and make it work with Node and Express, that's going to be your assignment for tomorrow, right, now you might say, well, there's nothing to it, right? I just take my files and dump it in here. Well, there's some modifications. You need to modify the locations of your JavaScript files. They have to be under the public folder, right? The way we've coded it right now, without any changes. Certainly, you can make it work any other way if you know how. But um, inside your public folder, you'd have to put your JavaScript, your style sheets, anything else that you want publicly shared, right, other than your views, with the outside world, right? The views is where you put all your templates. So you'd have to convert your index.js uh, files, all the other files in here as an EJS file, EJS files, right? So we're not actually doing Angular yet. Angular is what I need you guys to learn, right? Angular is going to be your syntactic sugar, if you will, that's going to go and give us a little bit more interactivity with your website, 
right? That we're going to put on top of EJS, right? But first, you need to know how to do this, right? So okay, so I've got my one root, which is index the uh, EJS, but I want to add other ones. I don't. I only have one, right? How do I do that? And we'll stop recording in a second. So I'm going to go back to my Cloud Nine. I'm going to pull this down, and I want to add another root. Well, the great thing about this is, you know, let's say for example, I have my container. Here's my container. And I want to use a template. So in between my body tag, right, and here's my, my script. I don't want to kill this script stuff in here, but I want to add another file in here that gives me, you know, another, you know, partial, if you will. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go add, right, new file. And I'm going to call this almost like my content. Right, let's call this content.ejs, right, which is what this is. And I'm going to cut this piece out of here, this whole class container and blah, 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 and whatever. I'm going to cut it out. I'm going to go to my content page now. I'm going to double click on this to open it up and control V for, you know, for paste. So this is going to be my div tag, the container. And this is where my content is going to go. I'm going to kind of control S. Hmm. How do I add it into my, um, my index.ejs? I want to make this as a partial, right? So here's my index.ejs. Well, my thoughts are I'm probably going to need to use these, these, this code block here. Now it's not an equal sign anymore because I'm not adding in a in a uh, um, a title, but I do need to add the kind of the page. So I'm going to call it content. Let's see if I can do this. Content.ejs. Let's see if I can do this. Percent to kind of add in my content there. Now we'll know immediately if this is working because we haven't modified our server. I can go back into my Express demo and refresh. If I don't see this, if I see this, which is what you're seeing, right? Take a look. This means that something is not connecting, and I haven't done this properly in here, right? So let's figure out. We look on the API to figure this out, because you're going to figure that you're going to have to do this yourself, right? So let's look at the API documentation. We'll go to Express, and I want to know how to do this, right? So here's my API reference, and if I say getting started. Right here's my generator. Here's my hello world. Here's routing basics. Um, you know, it talks about all this kind of stuff. But my API reference is really cool because what it does is it talks about how to add in. You now this is the application. Here's my properties. We don't have to go there. Right on the right, if you notice, it has all these other properties: response, router, application. But I want to create almost. My, I want to look at my templating engine. Right. So this is talking about how to do routing with Express and everything else. Doesn't really talk about express templating, uh, so to speak. Let's take a look at template engines, right? Under advanced topic, right? Under templating engines, it shows us um, there's two, and it shows us uh, Jade and so on. We're going to kind of go down here. It shows us that how you kind of set up set up your templating engine. That's what this does here, right? I found resources, right? Here's middleware that talks about middleware. There's applications, community, blogs, and books, and glossary, and everything else. It really doesn't tell us what to do here. Here's our guide. Let's see if it's under, under guide. Using middleware, uh, using templating engines. Oh, let's look at that. Here's our Jade templating engine. This is what this is. This is what Jade would look like, which is kind of unnatural for us, right? So that really doesn't tell us anything. And if you notice, we have to install Jade or all the other templating engines that we want to use here. To work with Express, and if you notice, if I go back to sorry, if I go to back to Cloud Nine, Cloud Nine has this Node module. If I go to Node modules, right, which is if you look at right at the top here, Node modules, it has EJS already loaded in as a Node module. So I know uh, EJS is active, and that's why I'm able to do this. That's why this error is going to come up. Okay, cool. I like that. So now, how do I how do I use partials? Right? How do I create, you know, templating and partials? And it says develop template engines for Express. You can do that. Hmm. Oh, I can use an include keyword. Right? Good for you. See, you looked it up, and everything's fine. So, but this is what you need to do, guys. This is what I'm saying. So we can figure this out. If I go back to my index uh, thing, and if I go include the include keyword, would it be just like this? No, that's an Angular include. That's Angular. But what can I do? This include like this include content EJS like this. Can I do this? 
Let's see if that would work. I'm going to go back to that. See, I'm going to I like my include idea. Ah, oh, there it is. Back to normal. So include, what it does, it allows us to include different partials in our say. It's one, one line. If you look at, if you want to know more about EJS as an example, because that's the templating engine we're using, we can say EJS. And if you go to EJS, um, and it says embedded JavaScript template, that's not it. We want to look at EJS templating engine, template tutorial, or template itself. Right. So here's embedded JS. That's what it stands for. Right. And if you notice underneath there, it talks about how to. Um, this is the how to use this thing. It's very very straightforward. Right. Because on the other on the on the same time, we're just trying to use Express, but Express is the it's not the templating engine. Express uses templating engines, two of them. Jade and EJS actually uses handlebars and there's others too. And you can create other templating engines for it. So if you go to documentation, right, and you can download, you can look at documentation here as well. Um, trying to see where, where there's some good code. It tells you how to, how to clean stuff up. But one of the things you can always use, and this is the, the major thing for me, is using the include or actually using code Right with EJS, just like we showed you last week. Remember, I, I kind of could put JavaScript code in there, write JavaScript between the braces, but the include is a really big piece of it. Okay, let's leave this alone for a second, and let's go back so that we know how to we know where to get our documentation from. And I want to kind of add some more templates. So I've got my I've got my Express, and here I am in my content. I've kind of broken out this content, and here's my index. And you know what? <clears throat> I want to create a header and a footer. Right for my template. I want to touch my code because this code's going to stay the same. This is just part of my JavaScript section, right? And actually, maybe what I should do is kind of do one of these. So, JavaScript section. I want to touch this part, right? Because that's the part where I'm going to leave alone. But here's my content, and maybe I want to create a header. So I want to kind of do the same thing: include, and then I'll, I'll call it header.ejs, right? And then underneath that, I'm going to do percent include, and then I'll do a footer.ejs. I want to have the same footer for my template. And I can have more than one template, by the way. Right now, it's just my template for my main index. I can create another template for users. I can create another template for my contact page. I can create a template for whatever I want. But some of these pieces, my header and my footer, might always stay the same. Remember I asked you all the time, hey, put in a footer with a, a you know, copyright statement and all this kind of stuff. Well, let's do that. So here's my footer.ejs. I'm going to save this thing. And then go to um, go back to my views. So I'm just going to kind of close some of this up to so make it easier for us to see it. And my routes too. And go back to my views folder. I'm going to right click and I'm going to put new file. Here's my new file. I'm going to put header.ejs, right? That's my templating engine. Right? And in include another one. So footer.ejs. So let's do that. And in that, uh, those two spaces go to the footer, and in my footer, of course, I'm going to put a footer, right? Can I do this? Is this proper uh, HTML footer? Can I do that? Right? And if I put in my footer, maybe in my footer, what I want to have is some kind of copyright statement in a paragraph tag or in a headline, right? So maybe what I want to do is the copyright statement will be in a, a p tag, and maybe I'll, in my p tag, I'm going to put in something like copyright. Right, 2015, right, and maybe I want to put that and copy at the beginning, right? So it's going to be called and copy, right? That's going to be my copyright little uh, icon, if you will, and control S. Now, this my footer is really it doesn't do much right now, right? But it's okay, it's just an example. So this is this. So my footer's done, and let's do my header, right? My header's empty. My header, I want to kind of put my my welcome to whatever this piece. I, mean, I kind of have that in my content, right? So I got this header piece in my content. My welcome is part of my container. Hmm. I'm gonna break this out a little bit to make this. This is my container, and then I want or maybe my header shouldn't be part of my container. I should make it its own container, right? So I'll kind of take this all this stuff here for now. Copy it and go back into my header, paste it, and then instead of my div class of container. I'm going to make this header, right? Same thing here. And then I'm not going to have this paragraph tag. I'm going to have my welcome title, though. I'm going to say welcome to whatever, right? Here's my welcome tag. This is where I want this stuff. 
And then in my contents, uh, maybe I'll make it an H, H2 tag, my H2 tag, and I'll say something like, you know, oh, hey, I got my title. Maybe I can add some more, um, my, some more variables in here instead of just title. All right, so let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to go to um, my app.js to see if it's there. Hmm, it's not there. Where did I have it again? Oh, yeah, it's under routes. And sorry for me being facetious and all, but you need to understand this, right? Here's my title, espresso, right? And I want to add in another property, right? So I would do it, right? Another and instead of my title uh, for espresso, let's my first, I'll put it, I'll call it first headline, right? First headline, and I'll call this, here's my first headline, right? Let's see if I can do that. All right, so here's my first headline. Oh, I got a apostrophe in my in this. So I might as well have to make this double quotes instead of single quotes. Let's do one of these. Let's see if this causes an error, right? So here's this, and I got single quotes here and double quotes here. Mm, I'm not sure if that's going to like that. But let's see. So this is my my first headline, and if that's true, if I go to my header now, and instead of putting my title in here, I want to put in oh well, my title's cool, but my in my uh, sorry in my content. I want to put in my title, I'm going to put first headline. All right, so first headline. And look, I got kind of reads that first headline. Right, save that. There's some lorem ipsum text. And maybe put another lorem ipsum section in there. So P with uh, lorem 50. All right, does that too. And then, you know, some more lorem text underneath that P, P tag. Maybe another kind of headline. So here's my headline. Three, and we'll type this one in. <clears throat> Subheading. <clears throat> okay, so I've got that. I've got my header. I'm going to save this. I've got my footer, right, which is already there. It's over here, right? And let's just kill all this stuff so we can see it. Here's my app.js, my content, my header, and I got my index, and it includes all this stuff. Okay, if everything goes well, if everything goes well, then maybe if I save everything, because I haven't changed my anything up, if I go to my express demo and refresh, oh, I made a mistake somewhere. All right, it says style sheets boot map first headline is unnot defined. So it didn't like that, eh? My first headline, which is that's gives me some errors here, which is good. This is my first headline. So how do I do that? Hmm. Let's go back to my um, <clears throat> index.js file. Here's my first headline. It's kind of made my title. My first headline, it's right there. And it's giving me an error because maybe these, the way I've done these two things are a little bit different. Maybe I need to do one of these. Let's try this out. Maybe I need to make a, instead of just this, because these are just two properties of my object, right? That's all I'm doing. I'm defining an object with two properties, right? With a comma in between. That's how you normally would do it. Where? This? Mm, between two, I can use single quotes and double quotes in JavaScript together. So that should take care of that, right? Should. We'll try and get rid of this in a second if it's going to be the problem, right? We'll check that out. We can, we can use a, an escape character to do the same thing, right? Let's just assume that that's not the issue and go back to my website and try this out. You know, it's still giving me the issue. First headline is not defined. It says, okay, hmm. Well, just as a test, <clears throat> this is a test. If I if I go here, I know that title is definitely defined. Oh, damn, you know what? I know it's going to work, but what am I changing here when I'm changing my routes? I'm changing my server, right? So, of course it's not going to pick it up, but my server's already run. So this is what I need to do. i got to go back into my bin, my runner, and stop my server for a second and rerun it. And if I haven't made any changes, it should be listening again. And then, if I go back to my express and refresh, it's going to be fine. Remember, stuff changes to my, my patterning is okay. And like you see all the, all the piece parts here, but you see that also that my copyright 2015 is not within a container. So that's why I'm not getting this, this um, uh, my bootstrapping is not working here. 
where it's working everywhere else, right? So let's try this out. Let's fix that problem. So my this is just a, 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 um, a templating thing. So I'm going to go back to footer. I'd like you guys to play with this thing. And I need to add in a, a class, right, of container. Like, so if I don't add my container class, then it won't do anything. If I go back to the website now and refresh, then we've got my copyright statement in line, right? So again, I've got piece parts. I've got partials, what we like to call them, right? Partial, um, you know, partial hyper, you know, hypertext markup language, HTML, inside different files. And what we're doing is we're loading them up as we need. Well, this is great. That means I can add additional um, routes or templates. So right now I've got my, my index.ejs template, and I've got a bunch of these partials. Well, this is all out here. Hmm, I don't really like this, guys. I think it's kind of ugly. I want to put all my partials inside another folder in the views folder. Maybe I call it partials, right? Because that makes more sense. Uh, that's going to mess me up. But let's try this out. I'm going to say add new folder, right? I'm going to call this partials, right? <clears throat> and this is cool. And I like the fact that it's views. But will we see partials in our folder when we pull it up? Let's see. Maybe we will. Maybe we won't. So I'm going to take all these files, content, uh, not the error. The error is something else. Oh, content and my partials. Right? And I want to put my footer in my partials, my header in my partials. And now, of course, in my index.ejs, I've got to change my path. Instead of header, it's got to say partials. Right? Let's see if that works, because that might be a problem. Right? Let's figure this out. Right, so I want to kind of clean that up. Right? I want to kind of, you know, kind of discern between my templates, index, and error, and my partials, which is content, footer, and header. I mean, these are partials, right? So if I save everything, let's see if I've got a problem, and I refresh, I'm good. Right, so now it's looking at it, and if you notice, these piece parts aren't coming up as partials, right? And look what you're loading up here. You're loading an app, your jQuery, your custom, your bootstrap, all that stuff's loading up every time you access my page, if I refresh, as an example but it doesn't save my partials. So the great thing is, here's where the recap is. We'll stop recording here. So with Express, we created an Express generator. We added in Bootstrap, which in your case, you could add in something else like Foundation, right? We created partials by splitting off our text and using the include keyword inside of our code block, Express code block that we're using. And this way, what we can do is we compartmentalize our code. And you can do this with mobile, jQuery mobile. If you wanted to run a jQuery mobile site, and remember, we did all these. If it's this jQuery Mobile works perfectly, right? Think about this, and it plays nicely with jQuery Mobile, because you've got in jQuery Mobile, you've got your header and your nav bar, and it's always the bloody same. Nav bar, nav bar, nav bar. It's all the same, right? The only thing you're changing your nav bar, which you can send in there as Express information, right? Is your um, which link is 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 kind of uh, active, so you have to change the active link, right? That's one thing you'd have to change. In your in your uh, in your header, right in your nav bar, but otherwise your the real thing that's changing, right? Because you can make a template. I'm using an index template, and every time you go to a new site, right? It's a single page application, which is really what we're making with with um, um, Angular JS. You have all these partials that make up the single page application, so it compartmentalizes your code, so you can work on piece parts of the code as opposed to make this huge website or multi page website with different pieces. And that's the power of Express. Okay, so any questions around this before we stop off? So that's like, you know, Express 101. I think we've done everything I want to do with Express. I don't want you to go any deeper than that. And the reason for that is we just don't have time. Right? If I had more time, I would express, no pun intended, more things around Express. Right? But we don't have the time. Express will be your, your templating engine. You can use this to, to create partials. Node is your server platform, which we're going to learn. We we just learned how to use. We're just using it instead of an Apache, uh, you know, MySQL server. Um, and also, we're going to use MongoDB, right, for our database, which we can do locally as well as remote. Angular as our front end for interactivity. That's why I need you guys to do the Angular training so we can get to that piece. Okay, cool. So we're going to stop here, and let's just stop recording.